Hey, welcome to the greenhouse. I'm Alex. Today, let's do photosynthesis. Come on. When you look around at plants, they don't usually look like they're doing anything, but actually, they're doing a lot. We just need to look at them differently. Today, we're going to quantitatively measure photosynthesis. In a leaf, chloroplasts near the upper surface capture energy from the sun. The lower leaf surface contains pores called stoma that allow gases to flow in and out, and veins bring water from the roots to the leaves. Sunlight drives the chemical reaction between water and carbon dioxide that produces carbohydrates like glucose. And then the remaining oxygen exits the leaf through the stoma, and the carbohydrates move through the vein system, building the biomass of the tree. You might have already studied photosynthesis by watching aquatic plants release oxygen. Counting the number of oxygen bubbles per minute is one way to get a measure of photosynthesis. And the oxygen release is one really important thing that plants do. It's where the oxygen we breathe comes from. Equally important is plants' uptake of carbon dioxide. Photosynthesis is part of the global carbon cycle, both on land and in the ocean. We usually think of the carbon cycle as a series of reservoirs, like the biosphere or the atmosphere, that are connected by processes that transfer carbon from one to the other. In the ocean, marine plants take up carbon dissolved in water to make biomass, and respiration returns it to the water. Carbon also exchanges between seawater and the atmosphere by dissolution and exsolution, and carbon can accumulate over the long term in seafloor sediments and sedimentary rocks. On land, photosynthesis and respiration also cycle carbon between the biosphere and the atmosphere, and carbon accumulates in soils as organic matter. These natural cycles run in balance. Photosynthesis removes carbon from the atmosphere, and respiration and decay return exactly the same amount. The inputs and outputs are equal, and the amount of carbon remains constant in all the reservoirs. When humans get involved, we upset the natural balance. Burning fossil fuels creates a new carbon input to the atmosphere that has no compensating output, so atmospheric carbon accumulates. But in order to actually determine if the carbon cycle is in steady state or not, we need to be able to quantify each of the fluxes of carbon and the amounts in each of the reservoirs. Now, to measure photosynthesis globally is a big job, but it's not hard to measure photosynthesis in a single leaf or a small plant. We just need to enclose the leaves in a transparent flux chamber and use our laboratory CO2 probe to measure their carbon dioxide. Now, this is a one liter flux chamber, and since we're going to use this for both our photosynthesis and respiration experiments, we've got a short how-to video. Okay, so here we've got an apple tree, and uh, you can see that it's got some fruit on it, so we know that this tree is photosynthesizing, it's growing that fruit. So let's set up our chamber and see if we can record some data from this apple tree. I'm going to put the leaves in the chamber with a notch and up. Make sure we're in the sun. Get my sensor in there. And I'm going to tell it to start collecting. We'll let this go for five minutes and we'll see how we do. So before we look at the data, think about what's happening here. We're monitoring CO2 over time, and we'll graph these data. What do you expect to see? So here's the graph of CO2 concentration in the chamber with the apple leaves. I've graphed minutes one through four of the five minute experimental run. The first minute can be very noisy since we're opening and closing the chamber, so we often don't include that in our analysis. What we see is that over three minutes, the CO2 concentration changes from about 410 parts per million to 210 parts per million. Knowing this, we could calculate the rate of CO2 uptake by the leaves. We just need to find the slope of this line. We can also look at some other species. Here we've got a taro plant. And here's a morning glory. Clearly, different species uptake CO2 at different rates. But notice that all three plants seem to slow down after a couple minutes. You might want to think about what causes that. So we've seen that photosynthesis can decrease the concentration of carbon dioxide in a small experimental chamber. 
Does that work in larger settings like a forest or even the entire atmosphere? The answer is yes. Here are data from a temperate forest. You can see the daily change in carbon dioxide, low during the day when plants are photosynthesizing and high at night when respiration takes over. And as we said at the beginning, we see in these data that the cycle is balanced. So even though it may not look like trees are doing anything most of the time, they can actually change their environment a lot. And other organisms, like humans, we can change our environment too. In order to understand if this system is in steady state, if it's in balance, we need to be able to measure those changes. Quantitatively measuring the magnitude and rate of change of environmental processes is one of the most important things that a scientist does. And now you can do it too.